the town of Norwood. This is the pre-bid conference for the elevator at the Civic Center. It's being held via GoToMeeting, and it is being recorded by NCM, uh, Norwood Community Media, as well as the town of Norwood. This pre-bid conference will be posted on our website under current bid opportunities. And so you'll have a chance to take a look at that as well. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do a roll call of who is showing up. And then if I don't have your name or call your name, I'd ask that you please give me your name and the name of your company so we can make sure that we have you listed here. So hold on just a sec. Okay, so I have Doug Mason. Here, Bright Light and, Electric. What is it again? Bright Light Electric. Okay. Derek? Present, Bright Light Electric. Okay. Frank, I've got you here, right? Yes, I am. Okay, Salomon and Salomon Associates. Okay. They are the uh, company that developed the specifications for this project. Um, I have caller six and caller seven. Is there anyone else here I haven't called? Uh, Jason Jennings with Delta Beckwith Elevator. Okay. Last name was Jennings? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and that was Delta Beckwith? Yes. Okay, caller seven? Uh, it's me, Kathy. Travis Farley, the Recreation oh. Director. Top Thanks. Board. Travis Farley is the uh, Superintendent of Recreation. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'll sign off with the bid process, and then from there um, I'll open it up to Frank Barati, who can speak about the technical portion of this, and then we'll open it up for any questions. So right now the bids, uh, this is does require DCAM certification, and it's going to be filed sub-bids in electrical, DCAM certification electrical, and the general contractor's uh, going to be a DCAM certification in elevator. The filed sub-bids are opening May 21st at 11 o'clock, and the general contracts are opening on May 29th at 11 o'clock. Uh, it does require the certificate of eligibility and the update statement, as well as a 5% bid bond. Because of COVID-19, what we're going to ask is that um, you, if you're having it delivered by FedEx or UPS or the U.S. Postal Service, that you call to confirm that we actually received your documents. The deadline is 11 o'clock on those dates. And also, we have a drop mailbox because the building is currently closed. And I'm not sure if we're going to be opening by the end of the month. There is a drop box located underneath the town hall tower here at the corner of 566 Washington Street and Hatton Street. So please put your envelope in there and again, a call to confirm or email to confirm that we have received your bid documents. Um, there is right now, because the Civic Center is also closed, we cannot do a site visit um, pub publicly as part of this pre-bid. But if you feel that it's absolutely necessary for you to go and see the elevator area, arrangements can be made using social distancing and uh, limiting it to one per one representative from each of the contracts and we'll schedule only one firm at a time. So if that's the case and you do feel that you need to see the building, please contact Travis Foley. Travis, are you using the civic number? Uh, yes, you can use a civic number. Um, we're checking that daily, um, and I'd be happy to coordinate that. Okay, so the civic number seven eight one seven six two zero four six six. If you need, you absolutely feel you need to get into the building to see that, but that building is closed right now. Um, there's also I've attached, and you need to be aware of the construction guidelines that the. Uh, state of Mass Commonwealth of Massachusetts has issued. It's also available on the state's web page, but we have included the COVID-19 construction guidelines. Make sure that you're following those. It's the responsibility of the contractors to make sure that their employees are following those guidelines and social distancing. Um, I think other than that, that pretty much is how you're going to submit your bids. Any questions that come up as a result of this, we'll try to answer them via um, the GoToMeeting here. But instead, what I'd really like is for any questions to be submitted in writing to me. And I will forward it along if it's a technical question to Frank Barati of Salomon & Associates. 
My email address is ccarney at nowitma.gov. So it's C-C-A-R-N-E-Y at nowitma.gov. So leaving off now, I'm going to open it up to Frank Variety. And Frank, if you want to discuss a little bit about this project. Sure. All right. I appreciate uh, everyone getting on the call here uh, in these trying times. All right. So basically what we have, we have a uh, single hydraulic elevator. It's a three-stop. It's got a capacity of 3,000 pounds, speed of 125. Uh, we're doing a modernization on it. Um, basically, we're going to re uh, replace the power unit, new controller, <clears throat> and new haul call stations. Uh, we do have a couple of deducts. Um, one of them is for the cab interior, and then the second deduct alternate is for the replacement of the end ground piston. All right. The elevated machine room is actually located within the boiler room, uh, which is adjacent to the hoistway. Um, we're going to do some, actually, a little bit of work to the walls there because they're damaged via water. So you're going to be removing and replacing uh, the current rock they have on both sides there get it back up to a two hour rating. We're also going to um, flip the, uh, the door as well. So we've been putting in a new door. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, uh, new door equipment, uh, new door operators, parent 40 edge, so on and so forth. Um, we're gonna need a uh, sump pit and pump in the, uh, in the elevator pit. Apply with current code there. We tie it into the existing uh, sump pump system that they have. Um, building does have a generator, so we will be uh, required to do a pre-signal to tie into it. Um, and that's shown on the drawings as well. Uh, we're going to have to put in uh, elevator recall system. They do have a current fire alarm system there, but it's only got one zone. So uh, right now we're currently calling for a, an elevator recall panel and tying into that zone. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then uh, for cooling, we're calling for um, a mini split system. And basically what they have there is up, uh, they have like a little uh, stairway that leads from the basement. And we're looking to put it up above the ground on top of that there. Uh, you cannot penetrate the roof there, but um, you can go right adjacent down the wall and punch right through and that'll get you right back into the mechanical room. So it's, uh, it's not that difficult to run to get there. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, just a standard mod with a couple of deducts there. Um, I assume everyone has the drawings and can see them. Right there up on the site, Kathy? Yes, they are. Um, have, have those who are on here, have you downloaded the documents? Right, yes. like yes, I have okay. yes. Delta, okay. Okay, and we do have some, uh, you know, new lighting as well in the machine room and the elevator pit and uh, receptacle, so on and so forth. So, Frank, are there any areas of particular concern that we need to bring out in this? Is everything pretty straightforward in the drawings? It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty standard mod. The only real added thing to to it is, is we are doing that um little uh wall repair work in the door new door for the elevator machine room um and we will be required to uh right now it does not it has a disconnect for the main but it does not have a disconnect for the elevator cast we'll be installing that that'll be new as well um, so it, it, there isn't really isn't uh anything you know pretty much like way out of the ordinary as far as I'm concerned, I mean, these gentlemen might have a, a different take on it, but. Okay. All right. Um, so at this point, and Travis, is there anything that you feel you need to bring up? Uh, nope. I think we hit on it. I know the sensors were an issue, but I don't know if that's a part of this right now. Um, the placement of where they're going, just because we have a lot of toddlers that are in there, and we actually had an incident uh, in the winter where a kid's hand got stuck in the elevator door when it closed but other than that that's all i really have 
Um, just so you know that this uh, building is used as a polling place for the elections. So when we look at the actual construction schedule, we're going to have to consider working around the building cannot be down during the elections, which are in November. So we'll have to talk about schedule and see if that is something that's doable, if we need to make any kind of adjustments to the schedule. But um, there's a primary in September, then there's the election in November. And, you know, with everything with COVID-19, we really don't know how we're going to end up doing elections in this country. And uh, it may end up being touchless. Hopefully we'll have more people who are doing the um, online or not online, the um, by mail voting. But we'll have to see what's going to happen on that. Um, I think, Frank, lead times, do you know what we're looking at for lead times right now? Um, well, I know down here in Connecticut, um, the current lead time, I just uh, started another project there, and the elevator uh, contractor in that said he had a lead time, uh, I believe, of uh, like 12 weeks or so. I don't know what the lead time is up there. Mm -hmm. for equipment. Okay. okay. So, I mean, given the... the strange situation with COVID-19, the fact that the building is closed now, but we don't know how things are going to be happening. The town will be, um, you know, we're willing to discuss what the construction time is. And, you know, we can always talk about extending any of the construction, the completion dates. But um, according to the specifications that we have, any adjustment in the amount being billed in the contract amount would be subject to negotiations. So we know right now that COVID is going on. Um, I don't see that as any kind of an issue. You should consider all the facts that we know right now when you're submitting your bid. So I'll open it now for questions. And please identify yourself when you have a question. I'm Mason Brightlight Electric. Who owns the, uh, who owns the sump pumps? Who owns the HVAC equipment? Uh, that should be the mechanical contractor. And the mechanical is going to be covered under the uh, GC? Uh, yes. Um, I mean, you'll, you'll be required. I mean, you own the connections, but, you know, power it up. But as far as the actual equipment itself, that should be provided by the mechanical. And just, just to be clear, in my mind, the reference was made to an elevator recall panel. What you're looking for is an addressable fire alarm system to tie to the elevator control panel that's furnished by the elevator people. Yeah, so what we're looking for, we're just looking for uh, uh, the panel to be, you know, just strictly for the recall. <clears throat> so that'll be tied in. Um, you know, you'll bring the connections to the the module, so on and so forth, in the elevator machine room, and they'll tie into the control into their controller there. And then we're looking for that panel to be picked up by the uh, the last zone that's available in the fire alarm system itself that they currently have. That's it for me. Thanks. Any other questions? Kathy? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Travis, uh, the Recreation Director, thank you for hitting on the elections as well. But uh, September in a traditional year, but like you said, nobody really knows. Um, we will see a lot more foot traffic in the building too. So like September, October, uh, in addition to the elections, um, you'll see a lot more foot traffic as well. So. Like you said, there is a window in July and August and maybe early September to try to get some things done. Frank, did you have something else? Well, no, uh, just touching on that, what I'm trying to think of, depending on when they can get the equipment, obviously, you know, once this elevator goes down, it goes down. So we're going to have to kind of schedule it um, to make sure we don't interfere with that. Um, you know, so I don't know what the exact lead time is going to be and, you know, and, uh, approval of the contract, so on and so forth. So where are we falling with that? Right. So at this point, once we make the award, the submittals will start right away or as soon as possible. Right, Frank? Yeah. I mean, as soon as you, you, um, you know, as soon as you award it, they can, you know, send in, start getting in electronic submittals to me and, and we'll turn them around as, as quick as we can. So, you know, and then uh, try to get everything ordered up and, you know,
know, and hopefully the timing will work out, but, you know, I don't know how everything's going to fit. Right. I mean, the hardest thing with bringing down an elevator is the reason we have an elevator is because we need one. But, you know, it's something that this one has to get taken care of. It was installed, I believe, in 1982 or in 1983. So it's really one up welcome there. And we need to bring if we got to bring it down and make adjustments, we'll have to do that. It's really about the only way that we can get the elevator done in there. But we'll work with the contractor on schedules on that. Sounds good. Um, what I would ask is that if you <clears throat> if you come up with any questions uh, between now and uh, the the sub bids, please email me. I'd also ask that uh, Mason the questions that you had asked during this, if you could please send them in writing as well, and we'll get make sure that we have a in depth answer. The answer will go out via addendum to everyone. So if you registered online to download the documents, that is the person that will get the emailed addenda. So make sure that the right person is registered with us. Um, <clears throat> I think that that's really about it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The other thing to, to just note again is that um, with COVID-19, the building is closed. So it's really important that you not wait to get your bid in. Under state law, we have to have any ad addenda issued no later than 48 hours before a bid opening. So my suggestion is don't wait until 1059 on the day of the, the deadline to submit your bid. Make sure that you get it in early. You never know what's going to happen around here. Um, any questions, you feel free to email me and then I'll forward them along to Frank Variety from Salomon Associates and we'll make sure that we get anything out there. But I'd rather if you go through the specifications and you see that something isn't quite right or you have questions, I'd rather that you ask the questions now and we can get answers to you during the bid process and issue an addendum, even if it meant that we had to change bid opening dates rather than have to go into change orders later on. I really don't like change orders. I don't think they're productive anybody so if you see something that isn't quite right please reach out to us with your questions we'll get the answers to you as soon as possible so that we can have good bid openings on this any other questions before we go no nope? okay then i thank you all for um joining the pre-bid it will be posted as soon as we have the video and the audio available it'll be posted on our website so feel free to take a look at that if you have any further you know something you didn't quite get sometimes we're having problems with the um, audio going in and out so feel free to look at our video we'll be issuing an addendum with answers to the questions um, i think that there had been one other thing which um frank was it on the date of the pre-bid and we had like Monday, May 21st, and it was- uh, Yes, yes there was. So there's actually a, a typo in the, the advertisement there um, for the for the filed sub there. We have Monday, May 21st, but that's actually should read Thursday, May 21st. Okay. So that will be included in the addendum as well. Okay, times have stayed the same. Okay, with this then, I'm gonna say that this is the end and closing of the pre-bid conference. Any questions, make sure you get them to me. And uh, Frank, I'd ask that you stay on afterwards just so I can talk to you for a sec. Sure. Okay, thank you. And you can stop recording at this point.